Hey there, Internet. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, it's been a while since we last took a look at the works of the stop motion animation studio Leica. Why, it was all the way back in season one when I reviewed Coraline, much as the beldam stood in my way with that one. Let us hope for an easier time then with today's subject, the Vox Trolls. <laughs> Released in 2014, The Box Trolls tells the tale of the titular race of underground trolls. Years ago, they were said to have kidnapped and murdered a human baby. But this is not the truth, and that foundling's destiny will change the town of Cheesebridge. Featuring the voice talents of Nick Frost, Richard Ayoadi, Sir Ben Kingsley, and Elle Fanning, could this be a forgotten foundling, or is it best left underground? There's only one way to find out. So grab yourself a cardboard box and follow me down beneath the streets in the lovely town of Cheesebridge as we prepare to meet... The Box Trolls. We're immediately introduced to our main villain, Snatcher. And in the dark of the night, his chosen quarry, Box Trolls. Snatcher has sworn to exterminate them all in exchange for entry into high society, but they were framed. Deep beneath the streets of Cheesebridge, the Box Troll Society isn't so different from our own, and we meet one who is decidedly not trollish. This is Eggs, and as you've probably noticed, he's human. We'll explain his story as we go, but for now, let's skip ahead a few years and meet up with the plot. But the forces that suppose themselves righteous are alarmingly successful in their mission, and box troll numbers dwindle. Matters aren't helped when a young girl hears a noise one night. This is Miss Winifred Portly Rind, but someone else is passing by. But the night is still not safe, and Fish is captured, which inspires Eggs to break curfew and brave the awful light of day. Made all the more awful with the retelling of the Trubshaw baby tragedy. The story goes that Herbert Trubshaw forgot to lock his door one night, and box trolls broke in, kidnapping his baby son, and eating the poor brat, and Trubshaw himself when he came to avenge. This is of course an entire fabrication, but we'll get to that, and the truth of Madame Fru-Fru. And with Winnie's help, Eggs finds the Troll Hunter's hideout. This whole elaborate scheme came about because Snatcher is dangerously envious of the nobles in Cheesebridge, and seeks to join their ranks, even emulating the tasting room of the portly rind mansion. But just look what Cheese does to him, which is all the distraction that Eggs needs to rescue Fish, but at cost to himself, and Winnie, when she blunders into this. You can feel that one in the morning. But when she points out an inconvenient truth, a much more inconvenient truth is also revealed. This then is the whole story. Herbert Trubshaw is an inventor and saw the box trolls as kindred spirit. But when Snatcher came to him with a job, Trubshaw refused. And not wanting his son to become a bargaining chip, he entrusted the baby who would become eggs to the box trolls though they believe that Snatcher killed Trubshaw. And so, Winnie hatches a plan to reveal the truth and restore what was lost. After a swift lesson in manners, Eggs proceeds to cause all of the chaos. Fancy shindigs are all very well and good, but cheese and pineapple only go so far. Mini scotch eggs? Mini pork pies? Cocktail sausages? Party quiches? Now that's eaten! which of course catches the attention of Madame Fru-Fru? Yes, Madame Fru-Fru. Snatcher's own veiled ploy to embed the big lie in the consciousness of the town. And yes, that is Snatcher, cross-dressing, East European accented falsetto and all. And no, I'm not going to make any jokes about that. Although, I will say that it's more economical to play your own propaganda outlet because it's one less person to go rogue if they ever learn the truth. But it's Winnie to the rescue once again. 
until Snatcher catches on. Which causes Eggs' great reveal to fall on deaf ears. Buy me a Kofi. I got plenty of stories about how stuff like this happens all the damn time. But there's still the little matter of Snatcher's grand plan. And the revelation that Herbert Trubshaw lives. But will the box trolls? Witness then the true monster that seeks to murder the Trubshaw baby in exchange for Lord Portly Rhine's hat. This is why power corrupts. You don't need a white hat to enjoy cheese. But please, enjoy your dairy comestibles responsibly. That's a house of love top tip. Stay fresh, cheese bags. But shock, the boxless trolls live. And set about putting pay to this steampunk nightmare decisively. But Snatcher will not be denied, no matter the cost. Serves him right. His whole elaborate scheme rested on murder, cruelty, and lust for glory. But then he came undone from within due to his own lactose intolerance. <laughs> Rot in hell, Snatcher. And so our movie ends with the union of man and troll. So that was the box trolls. And actually, I'm going to do right by the folks at Lycat, and I'm going to put this one into my house of love. Another adaptation from a children's book, sure, but this is a movie of many parts. Though at a breezy 92 minutes, credits included, it forms a cohesive whole, and doesn't outstay its welcome. So let's start with the performances. And Isaac Hempstead writes eggs, every inch of a cockney artful dodger, Except for the lisp, and I have to commend Elle Fanning for largely nailing the British short O in her performance. It's a pet peeve of mine. And of course the rest of Winnie Portly Rhine's character. Though I feel that the stunt castings are wasted for what little we get of them. Excepting Richard Aoadi and Nick Frost, who make a marvellous double act in Mr Pickles and Mr Trout respectively. And the models are suitably grotesque. The bulbosity of Snatcher's lactose intolerance being enough to draw howls of enraptured disgust from even the least squeamish little boy. The box trolls are trollish, the stooges are stoogy, and the cheese-brained white hats are very much parodies of landed gentry. Which brings us to the flow, and this is very smooth as scene flows into scene, the story unfolding uniformly, even if some of the beats follow something of a standard as the end of second act great setback flows into a final act climax, which is undeniably action packed. Although, the presence of Sir Ben Kingsley as Snatcher does tend to overshadow the film, but then, my own distaste for the relative impotence of the child protagonists in the face of such greatly villainous villains colours my view, and Snatcher is an absolute monster, especially when he's off his face on cheese. Ultimately then, if you're looking for a family film for the whole family, look elsewhere. This movie knows its audience, and that audience is little boys. Yes, your little Xbox trolls will love it. I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks.
Hey folks, Funky again. If you like the video, you know where that button is. Or why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!